Prince Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about discipleship, the model. Let me give you a little description of the teaching. How many people who pray and invite Messiah Jesus into their lives really continue on with him or continue in his word? Rabbi Yeshua, or Jesus, the Mashiach, very plainly said that those who continue in his word are truly his disciples, his Talmudim. The purpose of this podcast teaching is to provide a model for the works and the workers of Messiah Jesus. I will provide some personal examples and experiences that I've had while ministering, as well as resources to help you be all that God wants you to be. So let's talk about discipleship, the model. Jesus is your role model. Two-thirds of Jesus' ministry was concerned with or directed at healing. Let me read to you a short passage of Scripture from Luke chapter 6, verses 6 to 11. It came to pass on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. There was a man whose right hand was withered, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched Jesus whether he would heal on Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And the man rose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto the religious leaders, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other hand. And the religious leaders were filled with madness, and they communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Well, you know, the Lord could well have asked them, Why are you so angry with me? Why do you think the religious leaders were angry with Jesus? Here may be some reasons. They were jealous of him. They had no power. They only had control of the people. He was drawing away their followers. He was shining the light on their superficiality. But regardless of the reason or reasons for their jealousy and their anger, Jesus still healed the people. My friend, I just wrote somebody that I've been discipling, and I told them, when you're in the arena, you will be shot at. But your Lord, who already won the victory on the cross stake and is resurrected at the right hand of God, has given you spiritual victory spiritual tools. So let's talk for a moment about how Jesus still works today. Several times in the past, I've been invited to speak in public high schools in Southern California in the United States. Even though public prayer and Bible reading were banned years ago, the drug problem was so bad in these schools that they knew Jesus could help them. In every public high school where I spoke, the gifts of the Holy Spirit operated through me. In every high school, the Lord would show me a student that I did not know and a situation in their body. Then I would call them forward and share with them what the Lord had told me about them. I would pray for them, and every time they would be instantly healed. One time, a denominational pastor called me on the phone after I had been on a campus where the Lord had healed and saved a girl that previously had been the biggest bad mouth against Jesus on that campus. The denominational minister, the one who called me on the phone, said, We have worked for years on that campus trying to gain a foothold, and you come in and cause commotion. I asked him politely, If you mean by commotion that students were praying to receive Christ after a girl was healed and saved, then I guess I'm guilty. It wasn't one week later that I received another invitation to come to a high school in Orange County to speak. Right before I left to drive to the school, I called that denominational pastor and I told him, I received another invitation to speak at a public high school a few days ago, and I'm just leaving to go there, and I wanted to ask you if it is okay to heal on the Sabbath. Then I hung up. I guess he got the picture. He never bothered me again. Well, let's talk about the fact that Jesus has precepts. Today, we see many large churches. Does that mean the sheep are being fed or... Does it mean they're being fed but not nutritious food? Lots of restaurants cater to large crowds, but does that mean the food is nutritious? Large churches or mega churches are not necessarily a sign of productive ministry in the eyes of the Lord. 
To be a productive church, the shepherd leader must attempt to form and lead a power church, a real New Testament church. Programs and cell groups mean nothing if people are not being instructed in the ministry precepts of Jesus. What are those precepts? Let's look at what Jesus instructed his followers to do. Number one, preach and teach. Number two, heal the sick. Number three, cast out demons. And let's also look at the Great Commission, where Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. In other words, teaching those you teach, teaching the followers, teaching the disciples, the people you're building in the Lord, teaching them to observe all things, not just some of them, but all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Pastors that do not minister healing and the baptism in the Holy Spirit are cheating their flock out of 67% of the ministry of Jesus. They are omitting two out of three parts of Jesus' ministry. They preach and teach, but they're not serving healing or deliverance. Number two and number three that I just talked about. They preach and teach, but they're not serving healing or deliverance to their people. This is corruption. It is stealing. It is cheating God's people and the people who could be saved by witnessing the healing and miracle power of God. Now, why do some ministers or pastors do this? Usually because they do not believe in healing. Or they will tell you, I believe Jesus can heal. Or we have had people healed. However, the truth may be that they do not know how to minister healing, so they dismiss it. That is, they either do not believe Jesus will heal, or they do not have the faith to pray or believe for healing. The same applies to miracles, real miracles. The truth is, to minister healing and deliverance, they need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Healing ministry should be part of all church worship services, or at least one service a week designated for healing. But what about people who are sick, diseased, bound, or afflicted who come to any service in need of healing or in need of deliverance or prayer? Same applies to the baptism in the Holy Spirit and instruction concerning it. Well, let's talk about continuing in his word. In John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. I recently told a man who is struggling in his walk with the Lord, Do me a favor. Don't get religious. Just follow Jesus. The only Bible instruction he's receiving is one time a week at the church he attends, where he's told from the pulpit to write in three words in an outline from the pastor's sermon. I explained to him that he needs to study and learn the Holy Bible if he wants to grow strong for himself and for the Lord. Now let me ask you a question. What are your ministry gifts for others from the Lord? Are you a writer, a pastor, a prophet, a film editor? And you may have a combination of gifts with which the Lord has enabled you. However, whatever you're gifting, you are to have as a primary goal not only sharing the Lord and leading people to Christ, but making disciples, those who receive Christ, training them. By God's grace, I've been involved developing disciples for over 50 years. It's a blessing to see what the Lord accomplishes through people who are yielded to and love him. Sometimes it's the person you think may not be used very greatly that ends up being used fantastic. From all backgrounds of society and culture and education or lack of it, I've seen God do amazing things through his people. That's what he promised. In John 14, verse 12, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So let's talk for a moment about making disciples for Jesus. You know, I have never known a person to be a greatly used disciple that was not a student of the Holy Bible and that was not reading God's Word daily. We never get too old or too experienced that we do not need to spend time in God's Word every day. Years ago, when I first started the Free Bible Studies by Mail, we kept a record of progress of each student. You could visually see in a file box of 3 by 5 index cards the commitment of students or the diligence of disciples. You could see that many completed the introductory lesson and then progressively less for each lesson completed. But praise God for those who were diligent and completed the whole course. 
One Catholic nun from New York completed the whole course and flew to visit me all the way to California. She later wrote me that she was training a group of 1,500 people about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, and about how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Another young man that I had the privilege of pouring into personally and who came to many of my Bible studies prayed in his lifetime with over 170,000 people to receive Christ. Now that wasn't through ministry behind a pulpit. That was personal evangelism. He prayed personally with over 170,000 people to receive Christ. Plus, he trained many others to do personal evangelism. So remember, my friend, after people know the Lord, they need to grow in the Lord. This is what Jesus commanded us to do. Make disciples. Let me give you a challenge. My challenge to you is this. Pray that the Lord leads you to people who want to be discipled, those who want to learn God's word and grow and serve the Lord. Almost every day I am discipling people. These are in addition to those I have ordained into the ministry, And in addition to the various ministries the Lord has assigned me, my friend, you and I have so many tools available to us. Texting, social media, blogs, and podcasts. And remember, when this life is over, it will be too late. Let's impact the world while we're here. Now, I have some resources to help you. In the show notes of the podcast, I place three resources to help you. To help you continue in His Word. To help you operate in the gifts of the Spirit and to help you minister healing and train others to do all of these three. One of them is my book, New Testament Bible Studies. One of them is the book, How to Receive God's Power with Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of them is Health and Healing, Complete Guide to Wholeness. My friend, let God use you and then let God multiply his word and his work through you so that you can do what Jesus said, be used more greatly than Jesus himself because he's truly gone to the Father and given you his spirit. You're a winner, my friend. This has been your friend, Prince Handley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.